So I'll be uh, covering various graft options that we have available uh, with us today. So what is an ideal graft? Ideal graft in ACL is a one which should recreate the complex anatomical and biomechanical properties of the uh, native ACL. It should withstand the tensile load, the stiffness and strain of the native ACL and it should also limit the donor side morbidity and also allow secure fixation and rapid incorporation. So these are the qualities which should be present in an ideal ACL graft. So what are the graft choices that we have? So graft choices depends on so many factors and of those the most important to my mind is the surgeon's experience and the uh, preference because once a surgeon uh, experiences success with a particular graft, uh, he keeps using it and even uh, crossing the limits also. Then what are the tissues which are available with us? Again, patient activity level, especially if it's a high level athlete, uh, su surgeons prefer the bone petal tendon. What is the occupation? If there is kneeling, bone petal tendon graft may be an issue. Again, patients are very learned today and the patient preference is also uh, to be taken into consideration. And another important factor are that the associated injuries to the other ligaments, they also uh, help in making a choice that which is the right graft for the ACL. So uh, uh, the various options that we are, have are the autografts and among them the bone petal tendon has, has been in use since the, uh, some most, uh, since the beginning. Then hamstring is currently the global favorite. Then and cordyceps tendon is also making great steams and peroneus longus is another new kid on the block. Allograft and artificial I not be, I'll not be touching because we have very little experience and they are not available in India, especially artificial graft, they didn't have uh, much success. So when we are choosing a graft, what are the things that you, that you want? What is the re-tier rate of that graft or how, how often, how, how, how frequently that graft fails? What is the clinical outcome? What is the uh, rate of percentage of return to sports? What is the donor side morbidity? And as I said, experience and training of the surgeon is of uh, tent amount importance. So when we come to the graft failure or re-tier rate, the reported incidence in literature varies from 1.8 to 33%. And the various systemic reviews report that there is a lower rate of re-tear with bone petal tendon as compared to the hamstring and the quadriceps. And current evidence further suggests that bone petal tendon in athletic population has a failure, failure rate that is lower than all other graft options. Data on quadriceps tendon is not that much and it is quite limited. Again, there, there are certain high-risk groups which are more uh, prone to uh, have for re-tier and these are the young high-level athletes, the pediatric and the adolescent athlete. And uh, the studies show that the re-tier rate is more than 20% in high school athletes and if we compare the bone petal tendon versus the hamstring, it is about 5% for the bone petal tendon and 12% for the hamstrings. So all these things have, you have to consider when choosing a graft. And when we compare with the quadriceps with the hamstrings, the various studies show there is that there is no difference as far as the tear rate is concerned between these two uh, model between these two tendons. Again, coming to the donor side morbidity, we know bone petal tendon has been associated with a lot of uh, donor side morbidity in the terms of pain while kneeling, numbness, petal tendonitis. There have been instances of petal fracture even in our own series, in our earlier cases, and petalofemoral arthritis. And when we come to the hamstrings, there are not much donor side morbidity. Yes, but there are uh, some uh, neural involvement in the form of sartorial branch of the saphenous nerve and the infrapetalar branch. But these are usually transient and uh, go away with time. There is a sensation of cramping sometimes at the back of the thigh, but that is also uh, not a uh, permanent feature. Then other hamstring issues are that you may not get the good size of the good diameter uh, because it could vary from 6 to 8 till 9. But this problem has been quite mitigated with uh, some all inside techniques. And studies have shown that there are higher rates of post-operative meniscal tears and infections uh, while using the hamstrings. <coughs> Then there are certain uh, donor side morbidity uh, associated with the quadriceps tendon in the form of late quadriceps rupture, rectus femoris detachment, 
patellar fracture especially if you are uh, bone block is also being harvested uh, along with the uh, this uh, the quadriceps large scars the earlier the uh, incision used to be very large but now with the current techniques the incision for the uh, quadriceps tendon is uh, harvesting is quite small again this is a very important factor contralateral injuries we, we find this very common that patient who has sustained one acl done acl reconstruction on one side he gets a contralateral acl injury so this is a major co complication and as impactful as the ipsilateral graft rupture in young athletes and what are the risk factors for developing contralateral acl injury it is young age female sex more with bone patellar tendon and this is perhaps due to the fact that patients with bone patellar tendon go back to their active sports much early and that uh, makes them more prone to the contralateral acl injury and of course early return to sports is also uh, uh, f uh, associated with a risk of contralateral acl injury and when we uh, consider the return to activity level the various meta analysis reports show that there is an 82% chance of return to participation 62% chance to return to pre injury levels and 44% chance to return to competitive sports and literature favors that the, it's with bone patellar tendon uh, return to sports is much better when that is the main, main favored outcome when we uh, look analyze that and it is 81% with bone patellar tendons and 70% these are the various literature reports uh, which show the <coughs> then coming to the range of motion range of motion flexion is almost equal with all these grafts but with bone patellar tendon there is loss of extension of uh, reported as 16 degrees and 10 percent with hamstrings but in long term studies most of these loss of extension they uh, go away with time then strength is equal with both bone patellar tendon and hamstrings then what are the advantages of quadriceps tendon this has been in use for quite some time now the, you can vary the length if you use the bone blo block along with the quadriceps tendon you can get a length of about uh, 10 centimeter and you, you if you use only soft tissue part you can get a length of 8 centimeter this has three times more uh, intra articular collagen than the uh, patellar tendon it has a predictable length and volume the donor side morbidity with the present techniques many invasive techniques it is quite low and the outcomes are comparable with the bone patellar tendon as, as well as the hamstrings and as i said with current technology you can harvest with much smaller incisions so this peroneus longus graft we have been using for quite some time uh, we do not use it as a primary graft uh, but yes in a multi ligament this is a very useful very easy to harvest it just takes five minutes and uh, uh, there are no much donor side uh, morbidities the only uh, concern is that there could be weakness of some ankle movements but even uh, that we have not experienced we have been using this with the for the past four or five years and uh, with quite a good success <coughs> now we hamstring is our go-to graft and we usually make double bundles to recreate the anatomy and this is uh, quite anatomical i think Boshan would agree the tunnels they are uh, quite anatomical on both the femurs and as well as the tibia we have a long experience of using double bundles and we use hamstrings we use uh, triple uh, uh, folded uh, semi t for the am and uh, uh, triple or sometimes double folded for the uh, gracilis and as you can see the two bundles are very nicely seen and there are no impingements which means that the grafts are correctly positioned so in conclusion the return to sports is the main goal uh, with lower rate of a re-injury when we are looking at the various graft options or for the matter uh, when we are considering acl reconstruction and the success of in that sense autografts are always better than the allografts and the synthetics hamstring tendons have been used more globally however bone patellar tendon has the lowest rate of failure and uh, patients with bone patellar tendon are more likely to return to sports though there is some more donor side morbidity associated with the bone patellar tendons individualizing the graft choice remains the most important when dealing with acl deficient athletes you have to look for the overall uh, totality of the situation the associated injuries which also require uh, graft and athlete must balance his desire and aspiration to return to sports 
risk of re-injury as well as donor side morbidity. Thank you very much for your kind attention, please.